him as a saint going to a party that ain't nothing but sin, drinking, maybe fornicate, but maybe he'd have to lay some hands on somebody. Maybe he'd have to save some souls. I know he got a contract with Revolt, so I'm just like, it's just real strange. Diddy is taking the whole ship down with him as shocking new revelations have exposed the extent of Pastor T.D. Jakes' involvement in his sex trafficking ring. Seriously, what were you thinking, Pastor? The worst that could happen if, 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 if everything was true, all I got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. There's enough power in the blood to cover all kinds. Glory to God, I'm not in trouble. I'm talking about the power of the blood, amen. Pastor Thomas Dexter, T.D. Jakes, known for leading the Potter's House megachurch in Dallas, finds himself entangled in a lawsuit that has ties to Sean P. Diddy Combs. Would you help me welcome our internet audience that's streaming online? Come on, give God a praise for all of them. Thank you for tuning in, logging in, looking in. The lawsuit, brought forward by Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a music producer for Combs Bad Boy Records, accuses Combs and his crew of being involved in a sex trafficking venture. Quite a serious allegation. If, 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 if everything was true, all I got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. There's enough power in the blood. This civil lawsuit, filed in the U.S. Federal Court for the Southern District of New York and snagged by USA Today, claims that Combs harassed, drugged, and threatened Jones over a span of more than a year. Jones is aiming high, seeking $30 million in damages and a good old-fashioned jury trial. Now here's where it gets interesting. Jones insists he has solid proof, stating he's got irrefutable evidence of Combs discussing how he intended to use his connection with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the blow of another lawsuit involving Cassie Ventura. But hold up. Before you jump to conclusions, let's make one thing clear. Jakes isn't listed as a defendant in this lawsuit. So, he's not in the hot seat, legally speaking. However, back in December 2023, there were rumblings on social media suggesting Jakes might have been involved in some wild sex parties hosted by Combs. Jakes addressed these rumors during a Christmas Eve service at the Potter's house, keeping it real by saying, The worst that could happen, if everything was true, all I got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. He seemed pretty confident, adding, there's enough power in the blood to cover all kinds of sin. I don't care what it is, the blood would fix it. And just to be crystal clear, he emphasized, but I ain't got to repent about this. Let's not forget Jake's is the brains behind the Potter's House, which he founded in 1996. This megachurch boasts over 30,000 faithful members and branches not only in Dallas, but also in Frisco, Fort Worth, Denver, and Los Angeles. Back in 2021, Jakes kicked off a sermon series on Combs' cable television network, Revolt Media. Fast forward to last month and Combs made a big move by selling his share in Revolt Media to a mystery buyer. This comes after he launched the network back in 2013. And if that wasn't enough, just last year, Combs decided to step down as chairman of Revolt Media. Diddy is one of the most well-known and controversial figures in hip-hop. Sean Combs has been a key role in the industry for decades, from his rise to prominence as Puff Daddy to his rebirth as Brother Love. Allegations of sex trafficking and raids on his residences have stunned many and left them wondering what happened behind closed doors. Gene Deal, Diddy's close buddy and former bodyguard, recently spoke up, giving light on the matter. He began by addressing the misunderstanding that his aims were to bring down another black man. According to Gene Deal, it is not about pulling down a brother, but about keeping people accountable for their acts. He was frustrated with Diddy's public persona of love and charity, arguing it did not reflect reality. Before we dive in, gotta clear the air. Some folks think I'm here to tear down a brother, but nah, that ain't it. A black man didn't do all that foul stuff. Puffy did. I got tired of hearing him talk about love when it wasn't real. Nah, man. I call it like I see it. The talk then shifted to the unexpected raids on Diddy's residences. Jean D expressed disbelief that Diddy's mansions could be raided for sex trafficking. He ascribed this to Diddy's evolution over the years from flamboyant Puff Daddy to more charitable Brother Love. The discovery of monitoring equipment in Diddy's mansions, purportedly by Lil Rob, only fueled the flames. Now onto the raid situation. 
Could I ever imagine Diddy's Cribs getting raided for sex trafficking? Hell no. Back then, he was puffy, not brother love. His whole vibe changed over the years, you know? Inviting dudes to parties, shopping sprees. That ain't the puffy we knew. One of the most surprising aspects of this story is Diddy's quiet among his high-profile acquaintances. Gene Deal hypothesized that they may be hesitant to speak out for fear of damaging their own reputations. Drawing comparisons to Vince McMahon's experience with the WWE, he speculated that Diddy may become the scapegoat for a wider controversy. And about his famous pals staying silent? They either know the truth or scared to mess up their brand. Look at what happened to Vince McMahon. They're painting Puff as the face of this mess, just like they did with Vince and the WWF. Perhaps the most unsettling aspect of Gene Deal's revelations is the presence of tapes purportedly recorded in Diddy's mansions. Lil Rod's claims that every room was bugged caused shockwaves throughout the business. Jonda suggested that the recordings could include incriminating evidence against celebrities, politicians, and religious figures. As for tapes, if Lil Rod ain't lying and those rooms were bugged, oh yeah, they got them. Celebs, politicians, even preachers were in those parties. It's wild, man. But if those tapes exist, it's only a matter of time before they surface. Shook? You bet they are, me personally. If Lil Rod's telling the truth, tapes are out there, no doubt. As the inquiry into Diddy's behavior continues, the hip-hop community remains on edge. Gene Deal's views provide a window into a crisis that threatens to rock the industry to its core. I mean, the man's had like five lawsuits filed against him, and all of them allege crazy things. Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr., a record producer hailing from Chicago, has made waves by filing a hefty 105-page federal complaint against none other than Combs, accusing him and his cohorts of being involved in an illegal racketeering enterprise. In his complaint, Jones boldly asserts, I have irrefutable evidence of A. The acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. B. The displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. And C. The solicitation of minors and sex workers. According to Jones, as detailed in his complaint, his involvement with Combs began innocently enough in 2022 when Combs sought his expertise to produce songs. However, Jones alleges that the tasks assigned to him by Combs transcended the realm of music production. He claims that he was coerced into procuring drugs and arranging for sex workers to satisfy the desires of Mr. Combs. Moreover, Jones contends that Combs demanded these encounters be recorded, and if Jones resisted, Combs would resort to threats of physical harm. Further adding to the allegations, Jones asserts that Combs had a stash of specially designated alcohol for women, which he allegedly spiked with ecstasy. Jones also levels accusations of sexual harassment and assault against Combs, recounting instances where he was grabbed without consent and forced to work in the presence of a naked Combs. In a shocking twist, Jones claims an unsettling encounter involving himself, Combs, and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. aboard a yacht. He alleges that Gooding engaged in inappropriate touching and groping, only ceasing when Jones forcefully pushed him away. It was filed on February 2, 2024 in Manhattan's federal court, and as of the time of recording is still unfolding. Jones's lawyer has accused Combs of some alarming behavior, claiming he's been manufacturing stories about plaintiff on TMZ and dispatching his agents to harass plaintiff's eight-year-old daughter, the mother of his child, and ex-spouses, all of whom have expressed fear of potential harm by defendant Combs. Jones's attorney brought this to the attention of Judge J. Paul Aitken, who's overseeing the case, mentioning that an additional police report was filed on March 3rd. Jones is pushing for a jury trial. What was Combs's response? When asked for comment, Combs's attorney Sean Holly reiterated a statement provided to the New York Times on February 26, 2024. It went like this. Mr. Jones is nothing more than a con man, shamelessly looking for an easy and wholly undeserved payday. We have indisputable, incontrovertible proof that his claims are complete fabrications. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored, as Mr. Blackburn has refused to return our calls. We look forward to addressing these ridiculous claims in court and intend to take all appropriate action against all who are attempting to peddle them. 
Jane Doe, on the other hand, claims she was gang-raped and sex-trafficked by Combs and Harve Pierre, the former president of Bad Boys Records, when she was 17 years old and in 11th grade. She claims she met Pierre in a lounge in Detroit and he told her he was best friends with Combs. Combs allegedly persuaded Doe to follow Pierre and a third assailant on a private jet to his studio in New York City. She alleges she consented and boarded a flight bound for Teterboro, New Jersey, before being escorted to Combs' studio. She claims that once there, Combs and his colleagues, including Pierre, plied her with drugs and drink, and that she was then gang-raped at the studio by Combs, Pierre, and a third attacker. According to her complaint, while Mr. Combs was raping Miss Doe, he complained that he could not get off unless she pinched his nipples as hard as she could. Combs then allegedly watched while the third assailant raped her as she implored him to stop. After third assailant was finished, Mr. Pierre took his turn at raping Miss Doe and then violently forced her to give him oral sex, during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to breathe, according to the criminal complaint. Combs and Pierre have rejected the claims made against them in this case. Combs' attorneys have requested the judge to dismiss the entire case, claiming Combs was a victim of the cancel culture hysteria in the courts. The victim has been attempting to maintain anonymity. Judge Jessica G.L. Clark, who is supervising the case, has dismissed the woman's desire to remain anonymous, but has postponed that decision until she rules on Combs' move to dismiss. The judge gave the, On December 6, 2023, Combs issued a statement addressing the complaint. Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy, he said. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Pierre also released a statement vehemently denying the accusations. This is a tale of fiction, he said. I have never participated in, witnessed, nor heard of anything like this, ever. These disgusting allegations are false and a desperate attempt for financial gain. I will vigorously protect my reputation and defend my name. Those who know me recognize that these claims are not true. Cassie's lawsuit claims Diddy committed many acts of abuse, including rape, violence, and forced intercourse with male sex workers. Cassie describes the mogul, president of her previous label and then romantic boyfriend, as a textbook abuser, enticing her into what she initially thought was a fatherly, protective relationship, only to find herself in an unequal and violent sexual relationship. Diddy allegedly intimidated her by blowing up a man's car, dangling a friend over a 17th-floor balcony, and ordering her to carry his revolver in her purse. She never went to the police because she was afraid it would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. Diddy refuted the charges. Cassie, Miss Cassandra Ventura, was held down by Mr. Combs and endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands, according to the complaint. For Miss Ventura, the dark times were those she spent trapped by Mr. Combs in a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Diddy initially exhibited romantic interest in Cassie in 2006, according to the lawsuit, when his makeup artist mentioned that he was interested. Soon after, the young celebrity is alleged to have fallen into his jet-setting, drug-fueled lifestyle. When they started dating, Diddy and his inner entourage supposedly had complete control over her life. According to the lawsuit, persons close to Bad Boy Records founder covered up physical violence. Beatings were witnessed by Mr. Combs' staff and employees, according to the lawsuit, but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. Cassie claimed she never went to the police because she feared it would give Diddy an excuse to hurt her. In one episode of Assault in 2009, he allegedly kicked her repeatedly in the face, causing her to bleed, then ordered his staff to hide her in a hotel room. Every time she hid, Mr. Combs's vast network of corporations and affiliated entities found her, and those who worked for Mr. Combs's companies implored her to return to him, the complaint said. Many went as far as to explicitly state that her failure to return to Mr. Combs would hinder her success in the entertainment industry. 
Cassie experienced memory loss, suicidal ideation, and excessive substance usage during her connection with Diddy, according to the lawsuit. The court documents detail an occasion in which MRI data were sent directly to Diddy. The action identified Diddy, whose real name is Sean Combs, and his affiliated corporate organizations, Bad Boy Entertainment, Bad Boy Records, Epic Records, Combs Enterprises, and Docor, implying widespread involvement in the claims. Cassie requested unspecified compensatory damages. Cassie also claims Diddy compelled her to participate in Freak Offs, an arrangement in which she had no option but to organize and perform sex acts with male sex workers while he masturbated. The encounters persisted for years in high-end hotels around the country, with some occurring as frequently as once a week, according to the lawsuit. Diddy documented the meetings using photos and video. Cassie tried to delete films from her phone, but was unsuccessful. Once, she was forced to see footage on a flight that she believed she had deleted. Following a FO in 2016, he allegedly paid a hotel $50,000 to remove hallway CCTV film showing an inebriated Diddy hurling glass vases at Cassie as she attempted to flee after he gave her a black eye. She would use huge amounts of drugs to disassociate during these horrific encounters, including ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts. Cassie said that excessive substance usage led to addiction. The complaint claimed Diddy blew up Kid Cootie's automobile in 2012 as punishment for the up, up, and away rapper's brief romance with Cassie. Diddy once stated that he would target him. Around that time, according to the lawsuit, Kid Cootie's car exploded in his driveway. Cootie corroborated Cassie's account in a statement released through his publicist. This is all true, he informed the New York Times. According to the petition, Diddy pushed his way into her home and assaulted her in 2018, even though she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Cassie ended her relationship with him after the incident. She dissolved her relationship with Bad Boy in 2019. Cassie and Combs voluntarily decided to settle their dispute on November 17, 2023. Cassie urged the court to dismiss her entire case with prejudice, which meant that her claims could not be submitted again four days after filing her lawsuit. Liza Gardner filed a 22-page lawsuit against Combs and Aaron Hall, alleging them of forcing her to have sex with them against her will when she was 16. Garner alleges she met Combs and Hall in New York at an event celebrating Jodacy's record release. Following the event's supper, Combs allegedly invited Gardner and a friend to Hall's place for an after-party. She said Combs coerced her into having sex with him, and while she was getting dressed, Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and reportedly forced her to have intercourse with him. Gardner alleges she experienced severe vaginal pain as a result of the incident. She claimed she fled the apartment and later discovered that her buddy allegedly had sex with both Combs and Hall. Gardner claimed that the day following the incident, Combs came to her home and continued assaulting and choking her until she passed out. Gardner's complaint alleges that after being violently and statutorily raped by Combs and Aaron Hall, Miss Gardner's life has been overwhelmed by depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and strained relationship with men, and has requested a jury trial. Following the lawsuit's filing, Combs' representative issued a statement calling the claims fabricated and bogus, and the litigation a money grab. Dickerson states in her 22-page complaint that she met Combs after appearing in a music video with him while attending Syracuse University. She alleges she agreed to go out to supper with him on January 3, 1991, during her school vacation. Dickerson said that Combs purposefully drugged her on their date. She accused Combs of sexually abusing her and videotaping the attack, according to her lawsuit. Days later, a male friend allegedly admitted to her that he, along with other males, had watched the sex tape. She asked a buddy who had seen the footage, and the person allegedly said, everyone. Dickerson believes that following that, her life went into a tailspin, and when she returned to college, she was sent to the hospital for severe suicidal ideation. 
Dickerson claims to have suffered a lifetime of injuries from being drugged, sexually assaulted, and mistreated, and being the victim of revenge porn that Sean Combs, or P. Diddy, made and marketed. She is suing him for assault, battery, intentional infliction of mental distress, human trafficking, and revenge pornography. According to a spokeswoman, Combs denied and rejected the claims of misconduct. He recognizes this as a money grab, the spokesperson said in a statement. Because of Mr. Combs' fame and success, he is an easy target for accusers who will falsify the truth without conscience or consequence for financial benefit. The New York legislature surely did not intend or expect the Adult Survivors Act to be exploited for improper purposes. The public should be skeptical and not rush to accept these unsubstantiated allegations. Sean Combs' 26-year-old son, Christian King Combs, is being sued for sexual assault, battery, and intentional infliction of emotional distress, among other charges. Grace Omarque filed a 31-page lawsuit alleging that she was sexually raped while working as a boat deckhand for the family during Christmas break in the Caribbean in 2022. She is also requesting that Sean Diddy Combs be held liable for his son's activities in charting the yacht and accepting responsibility for his guests during the Caribbean trip. Omar K. claims that there was a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and other A-list celebrities such as French Montana and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. on the yacht. Claims that sex workers were sprawled out unconscious about that yacht, and it was difficult to distinguish which bottles of alcohol were laced with drugs and which bottles were not. According to her lawsuit, on the early morning of December 28, 2022, a heavily intoxicated Christian Combs physically assaulted her. She claims that Christian stopped her from leaving, stripped him naked, and tried to force her to perform oral copulation with him. Omar K. is suing Diddy, accusing him of creating an environment of debauchery characterized by suspected sex workers, violence, drinks allegedly laced with drugs, and disrespect for the crew. Aaron Dyer, an attorney for the father-son team, described the lawsuit's claims as lewd and meritless. This complaint is filled with the same kind of manufactured lies and irrelevant facts we've come to expect from Blackburn, he added, referring to the attorney who also represents Rodney Jones. This is exactly why the federal judge in New York slapped him two days ago for a pattern of behavior in improperly filing cases in federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressure defendants to settle quickly. And why he was referred to the disciplinary committee in the Southern District of New York. We will be filing a motion to dismiss this outrageous claim. On December 7th, singer-songwriter Tiffany Redd released an open letter to Diddy in Rolling Stone, which corroborated Cassie's charges. Redd claims she became close to the R&B singer in 2015 while working on an album that Diddy never released. The singer also attended Cassie's 29th birthday party, where Diddy allegedly yelled and cursed at her. After his verbal abuse interrupted karaoke with friends, Red claimed she witnessed the rapper pull a drugged Cassie to a freak-off in the middle of the night. She also claimed Cassie revealed the physical assault to her on another occasion. Diddy's treatment of herself and her companion resulted in PTSD, paranoia, and anxiety. The power imbalance makes it nearly impossible to fight back and terrifying to speak up, Red wrote in her letter. But despite that, here I am, standing beside my friend. There are moments in life when some of us have to face the hard choice of speaking truth to power or not. This is one of those moments. 50 Cent immediately began work on a documentary on Diddy's sexual assault charges. The rapper confirmed the news in a tweet on December 7th. G-Unit film and television proceeds from this documentary will go to victims of sexual assault and rape, 50 wrote beside an excerpt from the project. In the video, former Bad Boy Records rapper Mark Curry recalls Diddy's lavish parties and allegations that he would spike champagne for ladies to imbibe. He thinks they would become real, real slippery if they were not aware they had been poisoned. G-Unit Film and Television will produce the film. The searches of two properties owned by hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs were intended to discover evidence to corroborate his accusers' stories. And a legal expert said the raids indicate that federal prosecutors in New York, who are leading the investigation, are confident in the case they're assembling. 
The fact that they are taking this aggressive step tells me they have cooperative victims and they're moving quickly to make a case, said Rebecca Donaleski, a partner at Cooley LLP and a former federal prosecutor who oversaw the successful prosecution of Jeffrey Epstein's paramour, Ghislaine Maxwell. Prosecutors have examined several of Combs' accusers, including some who have filed civil claims, according to law enforcement sources familiar with the case. The next step is to attempt to corroborate what the accusations alleged. Any innocuous detail that you can corroborate, that's what you're trying to do, Donaleski said. Perpetrators keep mementos. They keep photos, videos, things like that. In the meantime, Brendan Paul, 25, a Combs employee cited in one of the claims was jailed on a narcotics charge. According to the civil action, Paul transported cocaine and firearms for Combs. He has since made bail. Federal agents with Homeland Security Investigations seized computers and other electronic devices at Combs Homes in Los Angeles's Homeby Hills neighborhood and Miami, according to sources, as investigators look for photos, videos, or other evidence that accusers may have mentioned during interviews. A search, especially one that is this high profile, signals they have confidence they have strong evidence, and the speed with which they have moved tells me the evidence is compelling, Donaleski went on to say. According to sources, the investigation is focused on potential sex trafficking offenses or violations of the Travel Act, which bars interstate or overseas travel for sexual purposes. Kesha also made a big impression as a surprise guest during Renee Rapp's afternoon Coachella show on Sunday. The singer appeared about midway through Rapp's performance to perform her 2010 big hit, TikTok, but she modified the opening words to wake up in the morning like fuck P. Diddy and held her middle finger in the air with rap. Of course, the song's original lyrics are wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, with the mogul himself providing a short voice saying, hey, what's up, girl? Back in November, during a Los Angeles performance on her Only Love Tour, she completely erased Diddy's name from the song, declaring, Wake up in the morning feeling just like me. That event at the Hollywood Palladium came only one day after singer Cassie Ventura settled a lawsuit against Combs, claiming she had been subjected to physical and sexual abuse for more than a decade. Combs has since faced a rush of lawsuits alleging assault, gang rape, and sex trafficking. Homeland Security raided his houses in Miami and Los Angeles last month, and while it was unclear whether Combs was the center of the investigations, federal agents interviewed several people regarding claims related to Combs. Aside from Keisha's appearance, Rap delivered a powerful performance of songs from her first EP Everything to Everyone and full-length album Snow Angel. Tawa Bird also accompanied her on the song My Tummy Hurts. Sean Diddy Combs has received almost exclusively bad press over the last month and change. Police raids on Diddy's mansions, a sex trafficking investigation, and several sexual assault allegations have damaged his legacy. Although all of the assertions appear to be quite credible and true, the legal process must be followed. While it does, Diddy's former protege has emerged to support him. G. Depp actual name Travell Coleman, recently spoke to Fox 5 NY. Coleman had previously been signed to Diddy's Bad Boy Records label. People should give Diddy the benefit of the doubt. Somebody just saying that you did something, people could say anything. Coleman also informed Diddy that he wrote many songs while in prison and would like to collaborate with him. G. Depp was convicted of second-degree murder in 2012 for killing John Henkel in 1993. Coleman spent 12 years in prison before being released in April. Diddy remarked that he thinks Coleman did the right thing when he confessed to the crime. Now, many people are wondering if Diddy is going to do the right thing and confess to his crimes. Do you think it will happen? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.